Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video we're going to show you how to use Ampere's law to find the magnetic field inside what we call a toroidal solenoid or a toroidal coil. What it is, is it's simply a coil that has wire wound around it and then the coil is bent into a circular shape and so that the wire simply goes all the way around like that from one end to the other. Notice that the current goes into the coil like this, comes around the back side and back up and so simply coils all the way like that. When it comes to the back, it comes out this way. So I in, in this direction, current out in that direction. So what we've done here now is we've taken the toroidal uh, solenoid and we've sliced it in half so we can look at it from this direction. Notice that on the outside, the current uh, comes out of the board and inside the current goes into the board so that, um, that the current goes around like that. And what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the magnetic field at the center or near or inside the toroidal solenoid. Then we're going to find a magnetic field over here inside the uh, toroidal, well I should say, when I say inside, I mean at the very center of it. So we're going to find the B field inside, so let's call it like this. So we're going to find B1, we're going to find B2, and we're going to find B3. So inside, throughout the solenoid, and outside the solenoid. That's probably a better way to say it. All right, notice that if you take your fingers and point them in the direction of the current, so they come out of the board and in the board like that, your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field, so the magnetic field is circular in this direction. Using Ampere's law, we're going to find B1 first. So to find B1, we're going to take Ampere's law, we're going to say that uh, B1 times dL, and we're going to integrate all the way around the loop, that is equal to mu sub naught times I enclosed. Now notice B1 uh, times DL, notice if there's a magnetic field inside and we go all the way around the path, that would be 2 pi r, so we can say B1 times 2 pi r, notice that the magnetic field and the path taken is assumed to be parallel to one another, so again, we take a look at that, we can then say that B dot DL is equal to B times DL times the cosine of the angle between them. And if the angle between them is zero degrees, the cosine of zero is one. So that's simply equal to the magnitude of B times the magnitude of DL. And if we integrate all the way around the loop, that's simply equal to the magnitude of B1 times the length of the path. That will be equal to mu sub naught times the current enclosed. The problem is when we integrate around the pad inside here, there's no current whatsoever inside, and so that is equal to zero, which means B1 must be equal to zero. Now we find the magnitude of B2. So we're going to say the integral around the loop, B2 dot dl is equal to mu sub naught times I enclosed. So here again, b times dl, we go all the way around, so this would be b2 times 2 pi r. Again, the distance from the center to the path is simply the radius of that path, that's, that's small r, and that is equal to mu sub naught times the current enclosed. Notice it's going to enclose all these wires, however many wires there are, so that n wires times i being the current to each wire, so simply going to be i times n. So, the magnetic field at that point, we can say that B2 is equal to mu sub naught times I divide, times N divided by 2 pi R, where 2 pi R is simply the path length. Now remember the relationship between the wire density. We can say that the wire density, the number of wires per unit length, is equal to the total number of wires divided by the length travel, or N is simply equal to N times L. So what we could do here is replace the number of wires simply by the density of the wires, the linear density of the wires times the length traveled. So we could say that B2 can be written as mu sub naught times I times NL divided by 2 pi R. And then finally, if we assume that this thickness right here is relatively small compared to the distance from there to there, then L which is the same as the 2 pi r, so L then can be said that to be approximately equal to 2 pi r regardless how big r is, if, as long as you're inside this tube. So since we can then say that L is approximately equal to 2 pi r, then this L 
would cancel out this 2 pi r, and finally we can say that the magnetic field inside a toroidal solenoid, kind of surprisingly, is exactly the same as the magnetic field inside a straight solenoid. So we get the very same result if we simply say that L is approximately equal to 2 pi r. And finally, let's find the magnetic field outside, so the integral around the closed loop of B3 dot DL is equal to mu sub naught times the current that's enclosed by that path. And again, this will be B times 2 pi r. Notice in this case, little r would be bigger than the radius of the toroidal solenoid, doesn't matter. And then we multiply that times mu sub naught times I enclosed. Now here, I enclosed is interesting. Notice that the wires coming in the solenoid or turning into the solenoid with the current going into the board and on the outside the current going out the board, notice that the wires have to be the same on the inside as the outside, at least the same number with current going in one direction for the inside ones and the other direction for the outside ones, which means they basically cancel each other out because that would be positive current or negative current or negative current and positive current equal in magnitude, opposite direction, they cancel each other out. So basically, the net result is, again, that there'll be zero current enclosed by that path, which means that B sub 3, the magnetic field outside, also is equal to zero. So B1 and B3 are zero, and in between, inside the toroidal solenoid, the magnetic field is the same as it is if it was a straight solenoid, mu sub naught times I times the number of wires per unit length. And that's how we find, using Ampere's law, the magnetic field inside a toroidal solenoid.